648 and new this morning. Dock workers on the east and Gulf Coast are officially on strike this morning with no sign of a new contract deal with port owners. The strike is expected to halt about half of the nation's ocean shipping. Iran Spitzer joining us live in studio now with what this may mean for New Yorkers. Iran. Brennan, Michaela, this is the first large scale eastern dock workers strike in the last 47 years, extending from ports in Maine all the way to Texas. As of midnight, tens of thousands of dock workers who run major shipping ports along the east and Gulf coasts, including the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, walked off the job, disrupting the national supply chain. Labor negotiations between the Longshoremen's Association Union and the U.S. Maritime Alliance, which represents ships and ports, remain at a standstill. Union members are demanding significantly higher wages and a total ban on the automation of cranes, gates, and moving containers in their new contract. Governor Kathy Hochul and her team say they've been working round the clock to ensure groceries stores and hospitals have the essential products they need. It's all about being prepared and I want to reassure everybody we have been taking countless precautionary steps to speed up the process of unloading these ships and, and deal with the container cargo containers in advance of this. The food supply is secure right now and we'll be certainly communicating uh, with the public uh, as this unfolds if it takes any length of time. Home heating oil, gas and diesel should not be affected. Governor Hochul also does not expect that upstate ports will be impacted by the strike. President Biden has indicated he won't intervene, saying resolving the dispute is a matter of collective bargaining. Guys, back to you. Iran, thank you. And more headlines. Two state troopers are recovering after a police chase ended with a crash. Their crews are hitting a tree here in the city. It began with the pursuit of a stolen car on the west side of Rochester. And this is video we have of the suspects. Three people from the car, two men and a woman. That stolen car was later found ditched on Superior Street. Troopers are asking for help in identifying these three people who were in that stolen car. You can give state police a call at 585-398-4100. Well, we're on now to the latest information we know about this tragedy in the Hilton community. Deputies do confirm to us that a two-year-old boy is dead and his twin brother is still in guarded condition at the hospital. They say drugs were not found in the home and it does not look like a case of carbon monoxide poisoning. They're still trying to determine what exactly happened. Began Monday morning around 5.30. The call came in on Parkwood Lane for an unresponsive child. It was confirmed the children were up on the second floor in a bedroom. Deputies say four of the people were at the house, including the mom, dad, other siblings. Deputies spent much of the day investigating the scene, noting the emotional toll this had on first responders and this grieving family. Deputies say there's no threat to the public, calling this an isolated incident. More news in just a bit. For now, your sunrise traffic as we are nine minutes to go until seven o'clock. Downtown, there's a crash at East Ave and Swan Street. Main expressways, though, passing through Victor. 490 west and eastbound looking good. 590 southbound getting past the Bay Bridge all at speed. And 390 in Greece, no issues there either. News 8, your local election headquarters, and in just a few hours, the presidential nominees will take their turn on the debate stage. Just 35 days to go until Election Day. CBS News will have this hour and a half showdown live from New York. You'll see it here on News 8 tonight. This is likely the final debate between the campaigns before Election Day. J.D. Vance touched down Monday in New York. He's been holding mock debates with GOP Congressman Tom Emmer, standing in as fellow Minnesotan Tim Walls. Walls told reporters he's looking forward to tonight as he spoke in Michigan Monday. And Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg has stood in for Vance in Walz's debate, debate preps. I think J.D. Vance is going to be great. He's going to concentrate on the issues that matter most. And we also hear from Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, a longtime colleague for Walz. I think that his strategy will be to continue to reach out to the American people so they know who he is. A majority of registered voters don't think either VP choice would be qualified to ever become president, but enthusiasm on that for Waltz is higher. Well, we are also taking a look at the rescue efforts continuing in the southeast, revealing the devastation that Hurricane Helene left behind. Monday, the death toll reached 130 across six states. President Biden says he will travel tomorrow to Asheville, North Carolina to witness one of those hardest hit areas. 
Legend of Major League Baseball Pete Rose has died at the age of 83. He spent 24 years in the majors and retired as MLB's all-time hits leader. He spent the first 16 seasons of his career with the Reds and he won a pair of World Series titles for the Big Red Machine then in 1975 and 76. His career ended in scandal. He was banned from the sport in 1989 for gambling on games including Reds games while he was the manager. He would admit years later to betting on baseball. That was in a book in 2004 after long denying those allegations. For the third time this year, central New Yorkers are coming together, paying their respects to a fallen member of law enforcement. Today is the funeral for Callie Campbell, the Oswego County Sheriff's deputy killed in a crash last week while on the way to a call. Campbell was driving on County Route 176 when another vehicle T-boned her at an intersection. She died later at the hospital. The other driver is expected to recover, and Campbell's funeral will be at the Fulton Alliance Church on State Route 48. Also today, postal workers are on Rock Rochester and across the country are banding together, calling on the Postmaster General to hear their voices. At this rally locally, postal workers say they will ask management to recognize the value of their employees by agreeing to better wages and contracts that meet their needs. Workers demand the Board of Governors brings back the public comment period at every meeting to ensure service remains in the hands of the people. They will also ask bosses to work toward recruiting and retaining a dedicated workforce to make sure everyone continues to get the quality mail service they can do each day. This rally begins at 11 at the Westgate station. Well, we just hit October 1st uh, today, but mm -hmm. that uh, burr may make you think <laughs> of December. The excitement already growing for this year's Rock Holiday Village. People ready for reservations. Organizers will have an announcement today detailing what's in store for this year's event. It's the sixth year the village will be at MLK Park. Fan favorites from previous years are back. The Igloo Inns, free ar arcade games, visits from Santa, take pictures as well, the skating, and so much more. All this runs different days of the week from December 6th through the 29th. The announcement this morning right there at the village site at 11. Stay with us on air at noon on News 8 and online rochesterfirst.com to be ready for that. I love our video there. Sometimes it's snowing. Sometimes it's pouring down rain. Yeah. Sometimes just a kid in the You lost never shirt. know what yeah. you're going to get. But I love the Rock Holiday Village. I obviously came here in September yeah. of last year, officially one year yeah, at nice. News 8. Um, but the Rock Holiday Village was one of the first things I actually went out to go to mm -hmm. by myself just to experience. And it's just so fun. Yeah. I love the atmosphere being together with everyone. Yeah, and before that, there really wasn't much to yeah. speak of. Uh, no. So that's cool. That I think they filled a good void uh, mm -hmm. for Rochester as we uh, crave uh, festivals in this town. Uh, so that was good. Low to mid 70s this afternoon. No chance for any rain uh, tomorrow. That's when we finally see a break in this uh, long, uh, consistent pattern. Rain showers in the morning time. We'll be covering those uh, during the sunrise show. And then we clear out sunshine to finish numbers in the 60s there. So on the cooler side. And then here we go. The overnight lows, the jacket worthy weather mm -hmm. kicks off Thursday morning. Get yourself oh, an extra blanket overnight. We're going to have the beanie. Uh, the beanie is ready. I looked ready. at it this morning. Teeny, I looked beanie. at it. Thought about it. <laughs> Thought about it. Enjoy your day, everybody. Have a great one. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, X, and on our app for news and weather.